I was on vacation with Sam one time, Samuel Jackson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we was in Portofino, we had finished dinner one time. We walking back to go get on this boat. Hey, you're Samuel Jackson, I wanna take a picture. He said, what's the magic word? That's him. I, and I went, Sam. And it froze the white dude. He, Steve Harvey, I hear y'all take vacations together on the yacht or something. Well, we get on the boat with Magic and Cookie. Steve and Marjorie have their own boat. So, you know how we often assume that all the big shots in showbiz are tight buddies, given their wealth and shared professional paths? Well, turns out Samuel L. Jackson and Steve Harvey might be flipping that script. Now, with their success and both being in the limelight, you'd expect them to be best buds, right? Hold up. Word is, Samuel and Steve aren't exactly trading friendship bracelets. And it's not just about Steve's mustache or Samuel's comedic vibe. There might be more to this apparent riff, and the grapevine is buzzing with whispers that Samuel L. Jackson might be getting ready to spill some juicy details about Steve Harvey his journey to start him. I said all the time. There we go. You know, it's like <laughs> Come on. varying degrees. The varying degrees. Then it's like, hey, what's up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Different levels. Yeah. All of it, you know, we make it work. We all know Samuel can crack a joke, but this time he seems dead serious. The gossip suggests there could be some skeletons in Steve's closet that only the insiders know about. And you know Steve Harvey, he doesn't take well to people throwing shade. If Samuel is indeed gearing up to spill the tea, we might be looking at a celebrity feud of epic proportions. The burning question on everyone's mind is, what's Steve Harvey hiding that's pushing Samuel Jackson to the brink of calling him out? It looks like there might be some spicy Hollywood drama about to unfold, and these two might be on the verge of a showdown nobody saw coming. <laughs> I got a four-year-old blowing y'all's mind. Yeah. It was the people checking each other. We didn't rock it with them. Yes, he did. We all know Steve Harvey has become a household name with his killer comedy and no-nonsense talk, whether it's on his radio show or his daytime talk show. But here's the twist. Not everyone is on the Steve Harvey fan train. Guess who's not buying into the hype? None other than our guy Samuel L. Jackson. Usually, you'd expect camaraderie among black celebrities in the entertainment industry, like Samuel Jackson and the late Bernie Mac or Steve Harvey and Martin Lawrence. But hold up, because the Harvey-Jackson dynamic is a whole different ball game. It's like one of those situations where one person just doesn't buy with the other, and the other is a bit wary of the first. Complicated, right? But here's the kicker. The details of their beef go way beyond what you might have heard on the grapevine. For starters, it seems like Samuel L. Jackson isn't entirely sold on the Steve Harvey charm, whether it's the professional persona or the real-life dude. We've seen glimpses of Jackson's feelings over the years, but things hit a whole new level recently when he spilled the beans about his run-in with Harvey a couple of years back. Picture this. Snaps popped up online of Jackson and his wife hanging out with Harvey and his wife at some vacation spot. Back then, then, with limited info about their relationship, everyone assumed these guys were tight buddies. Headlines even shouted, Life on the Ocean Rave, pal Steve Harvey, Samuel L. Jackson, and Magic Johnson enjoy July 4th on luxury yacht with their wives. Sounds like a pretty glamorous friendship, right? Fast forward to today, and Samuel decided it was time to clear the air. Those ocean rendezvous weren't planned. According to Jackson, he and his wife were just on their way to their chosen vacation spot when they accidentally bumped into Harvey and his missus. And let me tell you, judging by Jackson's expression as he spilled the beans, he wanted the world to know that this meetup with Steve wasn't some carefully arranged Hollywood hangout. It was a pure, accidental thing. So why isn't Samuel L. Jackson a big fan of Steve Harvey? Well, it seems that Jackson's not-so-warm feelings toward Harvey might be rooted in his relationship with Bernie Mac. And who wasn't Bernie's biggest supporter? You guessed it, Steve Harvey. I don't know if you've ever followed Bernie Mac before. <laughs> it ain't what you want. They down there, Bernie done cussed out everybody in the crowd. <laughs> And he's hysterical, they're stomping. The arena about to fall. And we're performing at this arena in Charlotte where the hockey players play. Yeah. So they had put down the floor on top of the ice, all the black people in there with coats. And then the dude said, we gotta have a 45 minute in the middle. Here's the deal between these two. During their time in the same comedy group, Harvey apparently had his eyes set on sidelining Bernie Mac. It's pretty messed up, considering they were supposed to be a united team pursuing success together. The grapevine has it that Harvey had a reputation for being self-centered right from the start, dating back quite a while. Talk to the head, talk to the head. South of low school, I'll kick a kid ass. When a kid get one years old, I believe he got the right to hit him in the throat or the stomach. 
Let's go back to the early 2000s. If you recall the original Kings of Comedy show, you'll remember Harvey, along with three other comedy heavyweights, becoming legends with their tour. The dream team included D.L. Hewley, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac. It was the most successful comedy tour ever, shaking things up and making big bucks while leaving a lasting impact on the comedy scene. Now here's where it gets interesting. Rumor has it that behind the scenes, Harvey wasn't playing nice. The tension reportedly revolved around Harvey's attempts to outshine Bernie Mac. Here's the deal. Harvey, with his smooth moves and aggressive banter with the audience, was seen as the slickest performer in the original Kings of Comedy. On the flip side, Bernie Mac's style was like a comedic roller coaster, delving into intense jokes that touched on real-life issues. Now, white people like space movies. Black people don't really do space like that. Black people love space movies. They love movies about the moon and Mars, where they can be leaving our ass down here on Earth. That's what they think. They think they're going to leave us down here on Earth. The rumor mill suggests that Harvey may have been envious of Bernie's unique style, and what started as a minor issue turned into a full-blown feud. Cedric the Entertainer, another OG from the tour, spilled the beans, and now the internet is buzzing with this comedy beef. It appears that those long-standing rumors about Harvey and Bernie Mac not exactly being BFFs during the Kings of Comedy tour might hold some truth. Cedric recently spilled the tea on Shannon Sharp's podcast Club Shay, revealing that the feud between Harvey and Bernie was more than backstage gossip. It had real consequences. Consequences. It even prevented the Kings of Comedy crew from going on another epic tour, missing out on more laughs. But there's more to the story. In 2003, Bernie Mac shared some inside info in an interview with GQ magazine, claiming that Harvey was jealous and tried to interfere with his movie roles. Steve, not one to stay silent, addressed these claims in a 2010 interview, expressing how hurt he was by Bernie's words. However, fans weren't entirely convinced by Steve's side of the story. So considering Samuel L. Jackson and Bernie Mac's close friendship, it's evident why Jackson might not be sending Steve Harvey a Christmas card. These guys weren't just buddies, they were practically industry siblings, the kind of friendship that runs so deep everyone thought of them as family. They even joined forces on the big screen in the movie Soul Men. Now, while you might recall them as bandmates on a wild road trip to honor their lead singer, what you might not be aware of is just how tight Samuel Jackson and Bernie Mac truly were. Jackson has been sharing insights into Mac's life ever since his passing, shedding light on their profound connection in Soul Men. In the movie, Jackson and Mac played characters who used to be in a band together, embarking on a crazy cross-country journey to pay tribute to their late lead singer. Tragically, Bernie Mac fell ill and passed away from pneumonia in August after they finished filming. To add a surreal twist to it all, Jackson revealed that Mac never got to see the final cut of the movie. Now, that's a whole new level of bittersweet. Jackson, the star of The Hitman's Bodyguard, spoke fondly of Mac, labeling him a friend. He even spilled the beans that the Ocean's 11 Inches co-stars would crack some jokes at Jackson's golf tournament in Bermuda. Outside of their time on the Soul Men set, Jackson admitted that he didn't get to spend much time with Mac while he was alive. The guy was booked solid with his show, The Bernie Mac Show, a Fox comedy series that had everyone in stitches from 2001 to 2006. Remember the ending of Soul Men, with that heartfelt dedication to Bernie Mac and Isaac Hayes, two genuine Soul Men? Well, guess whose brilliant idea that was? Yep, you got it. Samuel L. Jackson. Understanding the depth of Jackson's connection with Mac makes it crystal clear why he might not be thrilled about the Steve Harvey comparisons, and if you take a closer look at their life journeys, you might just see it too. Bernie Mac was no ordinary comedian, he's like the captain of the Pioneers Club in the comedy world. Known for his iconic TV series, The Bernie Mac Show, and the legendary Kings of Comedy Tour, later turned into a film directed by none other than Lee. This Chicago comedian was a titan among his peers. Sure, today it looks like Bernie had a smooth ride to becoming an icon, but the reality was quite the opposite. When life threw some serious curveballs Bernie's way from the get-go, losing his mother at a young age forced him into a tough spot, juggling multiple odd jobs to make ends meet. It wasn't exactly a walk in the park for him. But you know what Bernie realized along the way? That humor can be your best companion in this crazy journey called life. So, he decided to put all his focus into stand-up comedy, determined to spread laughter and entertain people. Bernie Mac's legacy goes beyond the laughter he brought to our screens. It's a testament to resilience, turning hardships into humor, and leaving an indelible mark on the comedy landscape. According to Bernie, motivation wasn't about comparing comparing himself to others. From the early days of his comedy journey to later in life, he had two simple goals, be the best and stay true to himself. Bernie didn't bother watching what others were doing. He had his own thing to focus on. When Oprah asked him about his ultimate goal, Bernie's response was straightforward, to be the best. So what did you think? What was your ultimate goal? What did you want to do? To be the best. To be the best. Within myself. Uh -huh. 
I'm not in competition with anybody. So you didn't care what form that took? No, nope. I don't care what people say. Fame and jokes were cool, but according to Bernie, that only appealed to a specific demographic. His strength, he believed, was in making everyone laugh, no matter who they were or where they came from. In his own words, he adjusted his style depending on the space he was in. During an interview, Spectator shared how she knew Bernie was destined for greatness after one night at his show. Now, you might expect Bernie, already a successful comedian, to be patting himself on the back. But nope, Bernie Mac revealed that even though he knew he'd eventually rise to the top, it wasn't something he constantly dwelled on. If you do well, the money will come. That's what I know. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And quit focusing on the money. Right, right. Because it's not about the money. My love for comedy is just unbelievable. For Bernie, the end game wasn't the money. It was about getting better at what he loved. In an interview, he spilled the beans that while folks around him were all about chasing that paper, he couldn't stand the idea of money being the driving force. According to Bernie, if you're good at what you do, the money's going to roll in sooner or later. Now, some people couldn't help but see this as a bit of a dig at Steve Harvey. You see, Steve has a reputation for emphasizing the importance of money. In one interview, he casually mentioned making around $10 million a year from radio and called it just a little bit of money. Yeah, you read that right. $10 million, just a tad bit, according to Steve. So when people try to f figure out how to make a million dollars, they have no idea how daunting that is. Because if you know how to make a million dollars, you go make it tomorrow. But since you can't figure out how to a million dollar idea, you go somewhere and sit down. That's the wrong approach. Now, this difference in perspective on money speaks volumes about how these two view the world. But it's not just about the cash for Steve. His life has been a roller coaster of controversies beyond the dollar signs. Despite his public persona as the family man, the beloved comedian, the sweet actor, and the TV host, Steve Harvey's personal life has been a bit like a plot twist in one of his own shows. Accusations have been flying around, ranging from him being labeled a less than stellar host to allegations of mistreating his former wife and kids for quite some time. Now here's some food for thought. If Steve Harvey is the go-to guy for family values, why did he get married multiple times then? It got a lot of people wondering about what is going on here. My first marriage, I got married when I was 24. I messed that up. The second one, <sighs> I need another drink. Ah! <laughs> I, just, I just said I don't do two, but you know. You got me in here now. <laughs> Lately, there's gossip going around about him having a bit of a wandering eye, turning his past marriages into a hot topic. Recently, an activist named Essie Berry stepped up to spill some shocking and dark details about Steve Harvey. And it looks like those words might have left a mark on Harvey's reputation. But wait, there's more? Turns out, while Steve Harvey might be the king of comedy, he's also conquered the entertainment world as an actor, producer, and writer. Harvey's climb to success wasn't always smooth sailing. Behind that smiling face is a guy who had to put in some serious hard work to get to where he is today. So, while Steve often paints the ups and downs of his journey as valuable learning experiences, it appears that the reality might be a bit more complicated. Here are some of the deets of Steve's second marriage with Mary Shackelford that seemed like a total roller coaster. So, Steve and Mary had a son named Winton, but their love story hit a rocky patch. Back in 2005, the couple went through a wild divorce, and Mary didn't hold back on how Steve quickly moved on to his current wife, Marjorie Harvey. Mary, in her own words, found it kind of disturbing how fast Steve shifted gears from their marriage to the new one. Now, here's where it gets really spicy. Post-divorce, Mary spilled the tea, claiming that Steve cheated on her with Marjorie during the final days of their marriage. Steve strongly denied it, calling it baseless and totally incorrect. But you know how the saying goes, actions speak louder than words. Steve did indeed tie the knot with Marjorie not long after splitting from Mary, raising some eyebrows and giving weight to those cheating rumors. But hold up, there's more drama. Mary wasn't done putting Steve on blast. She accused him not only of playing the field, but also of attacking their son. According to Mary, after being away for a few days post-divorce, she returned to find her son with what looked like bruises on his face. She claimed these injuries were Steve's doing, which led her to take legal action against her ex-husband. Mary decided to take her grievances to court, hitting Steve with a whopping $60 million lawsuit. The laundry list of charges included child endangerment, torture, conspiracy against rights, kidnapping, breach of contract, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. In response, Steve took Mary to court, and guess what? He managed to score an injunction against against her. The court's decision came with a condition. Mary had to zip it. She was ordered to keep the case details under wraps and avoid discussing it publicly. Now that raised some eyebrows. Why the need for a gag order if everything was on the up and up? To many observers, this move hinted at a possibility that Steve might have had a hand in the events Mary was talking about. Post case, Mary spilled more to a magazine saying, I didn't violate any court orders. This is about not talking to anybody about your divorce. That's what they're saying. I'm like, this is America. The whole saga left a trail of questions. Why the secrecy? 
Why the legal battle? It all seemed to cast a shadow on Steve Harvey's image as the relationship guru. Some fans started to wonder if maybe Steve's personal life was a bit messier than his advice columns would suggest. Now, if the drama between Mary and Steve wasn't enough, it seems like Steve Harvey has found himself in another sticky situation, the world of comedy controversies. You know, comedians really cherish their jokes, and there's a certain unspoken rule about not poaching material. But guess who's managed to ruffle quite a few feathers in the comedy circuit? You got it, Steve Harvey. Recently, funny man Mark Curry has has been making waves, calling out Steve for allegedly swiping his material and recycling it for jokes on his shows. This isn't a fresh beef either. Mark has been throwing shade about Steve lifting his jokes way back when on Harvey's NBC talk show. And as if that weren't enough, there's a lingering sentiment in the comedy realm that Steve has a knack for borrowing a bit too liberally from his fellow jokesters. Interestingly, this isn't the first time Steve's comedic practices have been side-eyed, with rumors even suggesting that Samuel L. Jackson might not be Steve's biggest fan, partly due to these alleged comedic borrowing. It seems like in the world of laughter and punchlines, Steve Harvey might be navigating through some rough comedic waters. Steve Harvey and Mark Curry got tangled up in some serious comedy beef. Mark's throwing it out there that Steve, the one who used to host Little Big Shots on NBC, swiped not one but two of his jokes. And get this, Mark claims he already called Steve out about it in the past, but the alleged joke thievery just kept happening. Steve apparently took Mark's Halloween bit, a personal story about growing up, but Steve wasn't having any of it. He flat out denied the accusation accusations, saying Mark couldn't even name the supposedly stolen jokes. Things got heated real quick, with Steve telling Mark to get a life and get a career. Steve went on a rant, saying he hasn't stolen a joke in 35 years and dared Mark to name the joke he's talking about. He even threw in a grow-up man for good measure. But here's the kicker. Mark wasn't just making stuff up. The comedian came armed with receipts proving his point and turned up the heat in this comedy feud. Mark Curry took his beef with Steve Harvey to Instagram and dropped some serious receipts in a video that's now deleted. Basically, he called out Steve for allegedly stealing a bunch of jokes from him for his show. In this video, Mark compared an episode from his 90s sitcom, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, where he talked about rocking a brown box as a UPS costume for Halloween. Surprise, surprise. Steve made the exact same joke in a 2015 episode of his show. In costumes. Hey, kids, please. Mama sent us down to the liquor store and put boxes on us. We didn't know what we were. I don't know what we are. I don't know. She didn't tell us. I think we UPS, I guess. I don't know. Every Halloween, I had the same outfit on. Every year. I just had a brown box. I wasn't nothing sad. I just not asked my father, could I have a new outfit? And he said, no, just wear the same one. And it was just a brown box. And he just told me to tell everybody I was a UPS man. And here's the kicker of all kickers. Other comedians like Cat Williams jumped in and had Mark's back. In a recent interview, Cat even called out Steve Harvey for supposedly swiping material from Mark Curry. This is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business and it's a man unit Remember how in 2008 Steve Harvey and Cat Williams found themselves in the headlines? These two haven't exactly been best buds for over a decade, and oh boy, there's a whole story behind it. So Cat Williams decided to throw shade at Steve right before a Christmas season show, and things got wild. Picture this, Jamie Foxx, who was a radio host at the time, adds fuel to the fire by playing a clip of Williams dissing Steve Harvey. Cat on the phone goes on a rant, saying he wants to apologize for what's gonna happen, hinting at their upcoming joint comedy gig. But here's the kicker, he drops the bomb, telling Steve that once he hits the stage, it's game over for him as the king of comedy. Steve Harvey then calls in, baffled by the whole situation. He tells Jamie and the crew that he's always been cool with Cat, explaining that back in LA, he didn't even know who Cat Williams was. Imagine that, Steve Harvey asking, who's this Cat Williams? Call me. Dog don't bark at parked cars. A dog only bark at a car that's moving and going somewhere. But Cat Williams didn't hold back in a recent interview, laying into Steve Harvey. Cat straight up called out Steve for supposed supposedly being jealous of Bernie Mac, spilling the tea on their years-long beef. According to Cat, Bernie felt Steve was trying to mess with his movie roles, even attempting to snatch a role in Ocean's Eleven, creating major tension. Cat went on, claiming that Steve, in an appearance on Club Shay, tried to act all nonchalant about not wanting to be a movie star. But according to Cat, Steve was secretly trying to compete with Bernie Mac for movie roles. Where he got so big, and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. 
What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? Cat didn't stop there, diving into Steve's marital history, claiming Steve said it was his first wife who got him where he is, then switched it up with the next wife who thinks like a man. Cat questioned Steve's credibility and authenticity, especially when it comes to claiming to be the king of comedy. He even spilled that he was offered the chance to be the fourth king of comedy, but turned it down because of how Steve allegedly treated Bernie Mac. Cat said, because the whole time Bernie was here, you were acting like you were funnier than him. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all. Cat's not holding back, calling Steve out on his claim and keeping it real about how comedy works. Well, unraveling the threads of Steve Harvey's personal life sure paints a vivid picture, doesn't it? The patterns in his behavior, especially with the legal drama and controversies, make you wonder if he might have been the source of friction in his relationships with Bernie Mac and Samuel L. Jackson. And guess what? It seems he's not the only one with a less than stellar view of Steve Harvey. The entire world might be giving him the side eye. Now we know Steve's got a knack for spinning a narrative to his advantage, so it'll be interesting to see how he plans to tap dance around this one. The plot thickens with Samuel L. Jackson possibly gearing up to spill the beans on Steve Harvey's journey to fame. There's talk of skeletons in the closet and whispers in the grapevine that suggest a sacrifice for stardom. So buckle up because it looks like there might be more spicy Hollywood drama about to unfold. Don't stop keeping it, Rizzle, and let's see how this comedy roller coaster keeps rolling.